Hello, and welcome to Chaska's fourth annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Human Rights Celebration. I'd like to introduce you to the community members who served on the 2020 Chaska Human Rights Commission. They include Sarah Carlson, Ellen Bean, Judy Dunbar, Kaylee Haga, Seth Spreadberry, Lisa White, and myself. I'm Jen Welbert. On behalf of the Chaska Human Rights Commissioners, we want to thank you for joining us today. Dr. King said, we have before us the glorious opportunity to inject a new dimension of love into the veins of our civilization. It's our hope on this day that we seize that opportunity as we reflect on Martin Luther King's words, honor his life work, and challenge ourselves to continue the journey towards justice for all. Our program this year includes contributions from many corners of our community. We'll hear music selections performed by members of the Carver County Arts Consortium, as well as reflections on Dr. King's legacy from community members and students at Breakaway Academy and Law Academia. We'll hear portions of some of his speeches from Chaska High School students. We will recognize acts of service promoting an equitable world for all of us and will present the Chaska Human Rights Award. And we're honored to hear from this year's keynote speaker, Ms. Sharon Sales Belton. Many thanks to all who contributed their time, talents, and passion for justice to make this program possible. We're especially grateful to our community members for spending some time with us on this special day. One other note, Shepherd the Hill Church in Chaska will hold its annual Martin Luther King Jr. service later today, beginning at 6.30 p.m. All are welcome to attend virtually on the Shepherd of the Hill Facebook page. And now, let's get our program started. Please join me in welcoming Dante Hughes to begin our time together. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Chaska Human Rights Program as we honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I'd like to start off by saying happy birthday, MLK. And thank you to those for allowing me to be a part of this celebration. I really appreciate it. For the last few years, we've been coming together to honor Martin Luther King Jr. on his birthday. And this year has been a little different with COVID and everything. And hopefully next year, we'll be back to it. But, you know, I want to make this one a, a little different. So I want us to all get a little bit uncomfortable here. And we all love Martin Luther King Jr. and all the work that he has done, correct? We agree that he was a great man and he loved what he stood for. But why don't we ever talk about the way he was treated and attacked? We agree that the way he was beaten was horrific, right? If he is honored so much and loved so much, why are we still having those conversations and problems today? He endured a lot to get us to a point in life where we, we just haven't made it there yet. And I believe that we should be. And since we're not there, I think, well, I feel like we should be working toward that. As a country, how can we love a man and honor a man so much in his work, but not acknowledge the fight that he was fighting still continues today? There's even a blind eye to what goes on today. We can change that starting right here, right now, in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Let's stand for everything that he fought for that he fought for, for <laughs> to change. Let's acknowledge how much things are still the same. Let's all embrace change and move the world in, in a direction where he wanted it to be. 
a world that we all deserve to live in, our kids deserve to live in. Let's become the community that we all talk about on Martin Luther King's birthday. This is how we truly honor, appreciate, and show our love for Martin Luther King Jr. and everything that he fought for. He didn't wait for change to happen. He worked to create the change. His message was peace and understanding. Let's become more peaceful with each other. Let's work to understand each other. Let's lift the spirit of Martin Luther King Jr. high today and every day beyond this day. I love you all and I am with all of you. Now, are you with me and Martin Luther King Jr.? We can show some change by, by talking to our neighbors, by getting to know their stories and their families. And too much we see people not giving us credit for our experiences. Let's understand each other's experiences. Let's honor those experiences. Let's celebrate those experiences and let's celebrate the differences and all of us, it's, it's what makes us unique, the fact that we're so different. But that's the beauty, the beauty in everything is the differences. I mean, yeah, we, we like being around people and things that, that, that are alike. But it's those things that's different that really challenges us. And it puts us in a position to be better and to grow. And I personally believe that is what Martin Luther King Jr. would have wanted. And how he would want us to celebrate his birthday. So I'll ask again, Carver County, are you with me? And Martin Luther King Jr. on this day and every day forward. Thank you. Got through the 
Got no the trouble the water Stop littering. Don't just throw it away, but make sure it goes in the recycling bin. I would like to donate to the people in need. That's my dream. Para mí, Martin Luther King significa que todos podemos ser líderes o tener un liderazgo, ser parte de algo, y que todos tenemos una voz muy importante. Un sueño que yo tengo para el futuro es que haya igualdad en todos los lugares y que todos podemos vivir bien de esa manera. Gracias. Now there are those who are trying to say now that the civil rights movement is dead. I submit to you that it is more alive today than ever before. What they fail to realize is that we are now in a transition period. We are moving into a new phase of the struggle. For well now 12 years, the struggle was basically a struggle to end legal segregation. In a sense, it was a struggle for decency. It was a struggle to get rid of all of the humiliation and the syndrome of deprivation surrounding the system of legal segregation. And I need not remind you that those were glorious days. We cannot forget the days of Montgomery, when 50,000 Negroes decided that it was ultimately more honorable to walk the streets in dignity than to accept segregation within, in humiliation. We will not forget the 1960 sit-in movement, when by the thousands students decided to sit in at lunch counters, protesting humiliation and segregation. And when they decided to sit down at those lunch counters, they were in reality standing up for the best in the American dream and carrying the whole nation back to those great wells of democracy, which were dug deep by the founding fathers in the formulation of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. We will not forget the Freedom Rides of 61 and the Birmingham Movement of 63, a movement which literally subpoenaed the conscience of a large segment of the nation to appear before the judgment seat of morality on the whole question of civil rights. We will not forget Selma, when by the thousands we marched from that city to Montgomery to dramatize the fact that Negroes did not have the right to vote. These were marvelous movements, but that period is over now, and we are moving into a new phase. And because we are moving into this new phase, some people feel that civil rights movement is dead. The new phase is a struggle for genuine equality. It is not merely a struggle for decency now. It is not merely a struggle to get rid of the brutality of a Bull Connor and a Jim Clark. It is now a struggle for genuine equality on all levels, and this will be a much more difficult struggle. You see, the gains in the first period, or the first era of struggle, were obtained from the power structure at bargain rates. It didn't cost the nation anything to integrate lunch, lunch counters. It didn't cost the nation anything to integrate hotels and motels. It didn't cost the nation a penny to guarantee the right to vote. Now we are in a period where it will cost the nation billions of dollars to get rid of poverty, to get rid of slums, and to make integrated education a reality. This is where we are now. Now we're going to lose some friends in this period. The allies who are with us in Selma will not all stay with us during this period. We've got to understand what is happening. Now they often call this white backlash. It is just a new name for an old phenomenon. 
The fact is that there has never been any single solid determined commitment on the part of the vast majority of white Americans to genuine equality for Negroes. There has always been ambivalence. In 1863, the Negro was granted freedom from physical slavery through the Emancipation Proclamation, but he has not given land to make that freedom meaningful. At the same time, our government was giving away millions of acres of land in the Midwest and the West, which meant that the nation was willing to undergrid its white peasants from Europe with an economic floor, while refusing to do it for its black peasants from Africa who were held in slavery 244 years. And this is why Frederick Douglass would say that emancipation for the Negro was freedom to hunger, freedom to the winds and rains of heaven, freedom without roofs to cover their heads. It was freedom without bread to eat, without land to cultivate. It was freedom and famine at the same time. And it is a miracle that the Negro had survived. In 1875, the nation passed a civil rights bill and refused to enforce it. In 1964, the nation passed a weaker civil rights bill and even to this day has failed to enforce it in all of its dimensions. In 1954, the Supreme Court rendered a decision outlawing segregation in public schools. And even to this day, in the Deep South, less than 5% of the Negro students are attending integrated schools. We haven't even made 1% of progress a year. If it continues at this rate, it will take another 97 years to integrate the schools of the South and of our nation. Now let us be sure that we will, that we will have to keep the pressure alive. We've never made any gain in civil rights without constant, persistent, legal, and nonviolent pressure. Don't let anybody make you feel that the problem will work itself out. Hello, my name is Kaylee Haga, and I'm a member of the Chaska Human Rights Commission. It is my privilege to introduce this morning's keynote speaker, Sharon Sales Belton. Ms. Sales Belton is currently the Vice President for Strategic Partnerships and Alliance for Thomson Reuters Government. In that role, she develops and manages private sector partnerships that serve government customers and manages key government legal and law enforcement trade associations. She also provides oversight and management of community engagement and employee volunteerism in key locations. Prior to joining Thomson Reuters, she served as Director of Community Relations and Corporate Philanthropy at GMAC Financial Services. While at GMAC, Ms. Sales Belton co-founded a nationwide foreclosure prevention program Ms. Sales Belton served as mayor of Minneapolis, Minnesota from 1994 to 2001. She was the first woman and first African American to be elected mayor. During her time in office, she achieved national recognition as an expert on public private partnerships in public safety, neighborhood revitalization, and economic development. She served on the Minneapolis City Council for 10 years and was council president from 1990 to 1994. Ms. Sales Belton began her career with the Minnesota Department of Corrections as a probation and parole agent and later served as the assistant director of the Minnesota Program for Victims of Sexual Assault. We are honored and grateful to have her with us today to speak to our community. Without further ado, Ms. Sharon Sales Belton. Thank you for inviting me to speak at the 2021 Chaska City Martin Luther King Breakfast. I am delighted to be here today. First, let me thank the elected officials, the civic and community leaders, and the citizens that are here today. Your presence and leadership is an affirmation of the city of Chaska's commitment to advocate for the well being and prosperity of everyone that lives and works in the community. I am so glad that you're here. I've entitled my presentation Taking Stock and Taking Action. You know, I grew up listening to the speeches of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King on the radio. One of my fondest memories is sitting on the floor in my Aunt Donna's living room as a young girl, listening to one of his famous speeches on my aunt's record player. My favorite was, I have a dream speech. I liked it because I believed then, as I still do today, that people should be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And that I, I, like everyone else, was entitled to America's promise of freedom and liberty. The speech was comforting for me as a young person. Throughout the course of my young life, 
and later in my adult life, I would seek out opportunities to advocate for fairness and equity for African Americans, for women, for children, and others who had been marginalized by society. I volunteered to register voters in Mississippi and in my own South Minneapolis neighborhood for many years. I also grew up in a family and in a neighborhood surrounded by others who had been then and still are today active in the fight against injustice and champions for the common good. Back then and still today, there are those in our community that had a very different understanding of the common good. And instead of advocating goodwill and inclusion, sadly, they stroke fear, distrust, and division. But I'm here today to say that we have the power to shape our today, tomorrow, and the future for the greater good and for the common good. We can't do it just by sitting and resting on laurels or relying on osmosis, but rather by taking stock of where we stand today and making concrete decisions about our future and taking the necessary steps to get there together. You know, Martin Luther King said, we'll never make any gains in civil rights without constant, persistent, legal and nonviolence pressure. Don't let anybody make you feel that the problem will work itself out. Well, he was right. The dream of Dr. King requires work and commitment and we need a team of people in Chaska to help get the job done. You know, we start by defining the problem that needs to be solved in Chaska. I know Chaska is a great city. My friend Randy tells me that all the time, but I doubt that the city can hoist a sign that says no problems here. I'm not in a position to tell you what the problems are. That is not my place. But my intention is to ask you to not sweep any of those problems that you have under the carpet as you will undoubtedly trip over them at some point and eventually somebody can and will get hurt. Now, I know a little something about tripping over lumpy carpets from my former role as the mayor of the city of Minneapolis. My most, my, my most costly experience was a result of a decision that had been made back in the early 1930s. City leaders made a decision to build public housing units on top of swampy Bassett Creek. Now, do you know what happens when you build housing on top of a swampy creek? Yes, you're right. The houses eventually sink into the swamp, develop moldy foundations, and the children and adults who live in these units develop and suffer with respiratory disease. Well, the city ignored and tripped over the problem for 50 years before those units were finally torn down under my watch at the cost of $100 million. Bad decisions, even those that are made by others can come back to bite. Trust me when I say avoid sweeping problems under the carpet. Now, let me get back to my primary point which was to take stock. Taking stock means that we have to ask and find answers to some important questions about the experiences of people living and working in Chaska. The questions must address all aspects of quality of life, including housing, employment, education, public transportation, and access to goods and services. You all know that the demographics in Chaska are changing and the surrounding community is changing too, and they will continue to do so. More often than not, change reflects growth or improvement. I wanna encourage you to embrace change, to talk about it, to celebrate and leverage it for good. 
change is not the problem. How we perceive and respond to change is. If we ignore and resist the inevitability of change and stubbornly oppose the inclusion of new voices, ideas, and experiences, we are creating problems for ourselves and sweeping them under the carpet, which will be costly to fix at a later time. My second and final message is take action. If you are inspired to share in the commitment of the city of Chaska to advocate for the well being and prosperity of the citizens that work here in the city, I am asking you to find a way to personally get involved through your faith, your favorite charity, through Rotary, the chamber, through your school district, or local government. Get involved personally to help shape opportunity and prosperity for all. There is so much work that needs to be done. We must be prepared to take a few risks and we need to be prepared to step out of our comfort zone. It is far better to make a mistake of action than inaction. Doing nothing, ladies and gentlemen, is not an option. Leaders from all sectors of our community must come together and, and be the change that we hope for in our community. City, city and county officials, faith leaders, teachers, business leaders, nonprofit leaders, the elders and the youth need to set goals to be inclusive, to be multicultural and intergenerational. And guess what? We should expect resistance, but we would counter resistance with our persistence. My favorite quote of Dr. King's is that everyone can be great because everyone can serve. In closing, I leave you with another familiar quote of Dr. King's that is especially appropriate for the challenging times in which we are living. He said, the arch of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Thank you.
The torturous road, which has led from Montgomery, Alabama to Oslo, bears witness to this truth. This is a road over which millions of Negroes are traveling to find a new sense of dignity. The same road has opened for all Americans a new era of progress and hope. It has led to a new civil rights bill, and it will, I'm convinced, be widened and lengthened into a superhighway of justice as Negro and white men in increasing numbers create alliances to overcome their common problems. I accept this award today with an abiding faith in America and an audacious faith in the future of mankind. I refuse to accept despair as the final response to the ambiguities of history. I refuse to accept the idea that the isness of man's present nature makes him morally incapable of reaching up for the eternal oughtness that forever confronts him. I refuse to accept the idea that man is mere flotsam and jetsam in the river of life, unable to influence the unfolding events which surround him. I refuse to accept the view that mankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war, that the bright daybreak of peace and brotherhood can never become a reality. I refuse to accept the cynical notion that nation after nation must spiral down a militaristic stairway into the hell of thermonuclear destruction. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. This is why, right temporarily, defeated is stronger than evil triumphant. I believe that even amid today's mortar bursts and whining bullets, there is still hope for a brighter tomorrow. I believe that wounded justice lying prostrate on the blood flowing streets of our nations can be lifted from this dust of shame to reign supreme among the children of men. I have the audacity to believe that peoples everywhere can have three meals a day for their bodies, education and culture for their minds and dignity, equality and freedom for their spirits. I believe that what self-centered men have torn down men, other centered can build up. I still believe that one day mankind will bow before the altars of God and be crowned triumphant over war and bloodshed and nonviolent redemptive good will proclaim the rule of the land. And the lion and the lamb shall lie down together and every man shall sit under his own vine and fig tree and none shall be afraid. I still believe that we shall overcome. This faith can give us courage to face the uncertainties of the future. It will give our tired feet new strength as we continue our forward stride toward the city of freedom. When our days become dreary with low hovering clouds and our nights become darker than a thousand midnights, we will know that we are living the creative turmoil of a genuine civilization struggling to be born. Hello, my name is Sarah Carlson and I'm a member of the City of Chaska Human Rights Commission. I plan to explain the mission of the Human Rights Commission, provide some examples of what we've done during nor normal times, and the inspiration we receive from the acts and words of Dr. King. Then I'll review the purpose 
of the Human Rights Award, its past recipients, the recent nominees, and then I'll announce the receiver of the 2020 award. The six other members of the commission and I seek to partner with government, business, educators, religious, and service organizations to promote a community of harmony and respect for the rights and dignity of all Chaska residents. Activities in 2019 included a photo display and speakers at the community center that featured the stories of Holocaust survivors. This was a powerful reminder of what can happen when the human rights of targeted groups are system systematically taken away. Also in 2019, the Human Rights Commission presented a public television video series entitled Race, the Power of Illusion. Each of the three episodes was shown at the community center and was followed by guided discussions that explored the origins, beliefs, and consequences of what we call race. Every year, the Human Rights Commission organizes the Martin Luther King Day event. In January 2020, we had a MLK breakfast with the community of Chaska. Guest speakers, awards, music and readings by Chaska High School students and refreshments gave us an enjoyable morning where no one thought about face masks or social distancing. During the remainder of 2020, the commission members worked with Chaska City Council members to establish a shared understanding of our goals and mutual objectives. To that end, we have since met with the Parks and Recreation Department and our Police Department to build relationships that will help achieve our mission in 2021 and beyond. The events of this past year's COVID-19 pandemic and how the and the division we have felt as a nation have demonstrated how quickly and deeply our lives can change. Remaining healthy has isolated us from our neighbors, while our streets have been filled with protest and violence. The death of George Floyd sparked unrest and doubts about the progress that we have made to understand racism. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, said Dr. King. The killing of George Floyd has created the urgency to take powerful actions to combat the results of racial inequality. The 2021 Martin Luther King celebration that you are viewing today is a moment that allows the commission to highlight the importance of those actions and related community service. Dr. King, encourage people to take personal responsibility and to see our neighbors without regard to race or other defining categories. As a reflection of the hope that distinguishes between today's challenges and tomorrow's possibilities, he called upon us to lift up humanity with excellence. As a great spot to begin 2021, the nominations we received for the Human Rights Award clearly spoke to the remarkable ways that encouraged hope and unity in Chaska. The Human Rights Award was first given in 2011. It provides inspiration for our community to continue to find ways to care for the well being of members of our community. As we celebrate the life and the works of Dr. King today, we also celebrate the people and the organizations in the Chaska community who have impacted lives for the better. Dr. King asked, what are you doing for others? In our community, we have many dedicated individuals and organizations that uplift our community. Perhaps you know someone who has had their lives touched by past award recipients. Perhaps you have worked with an organization that has contributed to the improvement of life in Chaska. We want to recognize the commitments by the previous Human Rights Award winners, Joanna Hurstbrit, Guardian Angels Church Homebound Ministry, Reverend Gordon Stewart, The Gathering Place, The Blessed Bee Thrift Store, 
launch ministry. Love in the name of Christ. Miss Libby Fairchild and Miss Barbara Polow. The Human Rights Commission received five nominations for the 2020 award, representing individuals and organizations that demonstrated substantial effort toward preserving equality and justice for groups of people whose circumstances make them vulnerable to prejudice, discrimination, or injustice in Chaska. The nominees for the 2020 award were His House Foundation, Martha Brannan, for providing basic necessities to individuals transitioning from homelessness and for the Abundance Food Program that gathers excess food and distributes to those in need. Esperanza Means Hope, organization for building strong relationships in, in, in our community to increase food, quality food, for community members and students. Mr. Randy Maluchnik, for his efforts in meeting the needs of our community through assistance to veterans, promoting access to mental health services, reducing food insecurity, pursuing affordable housing and transportation options. Random Acts of Kindness, Dan Terzinski, for his help to individuals participating in local treatment facilities and individuals and families living in the Brandondale and Riverview Terrace community and also for being a supporting member of A Better Society and Latino Voices of Minnesota. Ms. Leon Winters for gathering and providing quality winter clothes, gloves, hats, and other clothing to family and individuals in need in Chaska. In 2020, all of the nominees practiced acts of servicing our community within their day-to-day -day operations. Thank you for your efforts in improving the quality of life in Chaska. The 2020 award, Human Rights Award is given to Leanne Winters for her actions that demonstrate the mission of the City of Chaska's Human Rights Commission. She acts without regard for public recognition and fulfills the goals that Dr. King inspires us to reach. Ms. Winters has been the go-to person for school counselors, area human service agencies, organizations and churches to provide quality winter wear for all ages and ethnic origins. Depending on the time of year, her home may be filled with donations that are in the various stages of being sorted, washed and repaired. She is frequently asked to pull together clothing for families and individuals who lack transportation, and she takes the extra time to personally deliver these goods. A quiet hero, never seeking out praise, she conscientiously fills the needs of warmth, are just a few of the words used to describe her actions. Her commitment to ensure that quality items are available for those in need ensures that the recipients are not isolated due to the condition of their clothing. She also assists in addressing the many other issues that affect people's lives. Her decade of service and dedication has advanced the opportunities and human rights in our community. Leanne's efforts and dedication provide a model for all of us and inspire us to work toward creating a desirable and inclusive community. I am honored to present the City of Chaska Human Rights Award for 2020 to Ms. Leanne Winters. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, I was at words. I'm very honored to receive this. I'm only part of a little speck of all that comes together for that to happen, what you said, and I thank you very much. Hi, my name is Vivian, and um, I'm seven years old. And um, I go to Breakaway Academy, and my teacher's name is Miss Snugger, 
and um, I have a dream to stop COVID and stop littering and stop littering, treat others nicely, stop being mean and be polite and be safe. This past year, I've been learning from home. I didn't get to play baseball, go on vacation, have Thanksgiving, or have a birthday party. These are some of the things I missed out on because of COVID-19, but everybody missed out on things. My hope and dream would be that everyone would get vaccinated or we find a cure so we could do all the things we love again and less people will get sick. Also, I hope until then, everyone can get help in the hospital if they need it. Hi, my name is Addie. I'm in second grade. I am seven years old, and I am in Mrs. Snuggard's class in se- in Breakaway Academy. My dr- I have a dream that I could talk to the president and say, no bad people should be in this world. Everybody should be safe, and people should be kind and respectful to everybody. My name's Calum. I'm a second grader. And I go to Breakaway Academy. My teacher is Miss Sh- Miss Nuggeru. I have a dream for people to not hurt others and to be kind. Don't judge the clothes people wear. We all are different because it would be boring. If people were the same, it would be happier if people were different. Hi, my name's Jack. I'm seven years old and I'm in second grade. I have a dream. I want to have people to get what they need for their life to have people to get the things and food they need. I want to have people treated others the way you want to be treated. Hi, my name is Benji. I am seven years old and I go to Breakaway Academy and I am in Mrs. Snuggard's class. My dream for the world is for everybody to be kind to others and that everybody has food because I think it's not right that some people are treated unfairly. Hi, my name is Valentina and I have a dream that people will stop littering and be polite to everyone. Stop hurting and treat people evenly. Hi, my name is Grant. I am nine years old and I go to Breakaway Academy. I have a dream for the world to stop world hunger and to stop racism. Also, to stop racism, it does not matter what color your skin is because we are all human. Hi, my name is Wyatt and I'm eight years old and I go to Breakaway Academy. Um, I have a dream to stop pollution in the air. I want people to donate to food shelves and to treat people fairly and kindly. there be peace in our city May justice flow like a river May the desires of the faithful be heard May there be life Oh, may there be There be right where so much wrong resides. Hey. Sorrow have ended, death be no more. Though 
goes out to sea will be welcome ashore. Oh, amen. 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 Deferred makes a heart sick, but desire met is the tree of life. Hope deferred makes a heart sick, it's just a matter of time. Hope deferred makes a heart sick, but desire met is the tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. It's time.